Hi, so today I thought I'd try something a little different. I get asked a lot of questions like, how do you do this or how do you do that? And I never always know um, where to start with these examples um, or why, you know, to show why you would use this method instead of that method. So I have a really big composite I'm doing for an author for a book cover. And I thought I would just take you on that journey with me. You can kind of watch over my shoulder, so to speak, as I put this together. Um, so we start in Daz. I'm going to render a bunch of stuff out and um, bring it into Photoshop, make it into one complete piece um, that looks like it's always been put together. And um, so today we'll start a little bit in Daz. I'll show you how I um, do a setup for that's specifically for composites. But also we will do um, we will do a complete character today that will be part of the composite. And um, this guy is Slade. Slade is a banther. A banther? Yes, a banther. He's um, a badger face and a human form body. So we have to create this um, human guy and turn him into a banther assassin. Um, so we'll do this. We'll get to this guy today in Photoshop. Um, but let's start in Daz and I'll show you how I set things up for composites. Okay, so here we are with in Daz Studio. We have our full scene. Um, I couldn't render this out as a scene even if I wanted to. It would probably take a week because my system just does not have the resources for it. Also, there's changes I need to make to these characters that cannot be done in Daz. I need to make... Um, my guy over here into a banther, um, as you saw in the earlier images. The girl needs some more hair blowing around. I need to add some wrinkles in the dress. Yes, I tried deforce so many times, tried to get deforce to work, and I, cr I kept crashing my system. I don't know if it's something I changed in my 3D settings playing a recent video game. Yeah, because I made some changes there. Yeah, could have messed that up myself. I have something I'll have to go back in and switch. But not something I had time to do for this particular project. Something I need to learn in the future. Okay, so we have our scene. And the main thing we want to do, like even though I'm rendering these out separately, yes, I could do each one separately on their own little screen. I didn't need to do a scene. But one thing I want to make sure will stay the same, the same and consistent throughout the image is I need the camera angle to stay the same and I need the lighting to stay the same so that these images look cohesive at the end. Um, so that's why I set it up a scene. Also, I want to make sure the poses are working together, even though the placements might change a little bit. I want to make, you know, this is in general how this will look, although in Photoshop I might tweak it as far as pushing someone back further and moving them further away. But I do my whole scene. I get my lighting correct. I get my camera angle where I want it, and then I save it. Um, in this case, I did Fate Book 2, and I saved my entire scene. Once that's done, I go in, and now I'm concentrating on just this character. So I'm going to leave my camera, because that's something that's going to stay the same. I'm going to leave Scott 6, because he's the character working, we're working on. And I'm going to delete everything else out of the scene. So we have just got six. At this point, I will save this file again. Do not hit Control S or you have just overwritten your entire scene. I do File, Save As, Scene, and it will give me the option to rename the scene as something else. And in this case, I used Fate Book 2 Slade. And the reason I'm telling you this is if you keep, when doing composites like this, if you keep them um, using Fate Book 2, so I kept the kept the original title but added Slate at the end, it'll keep these characters all together. So when I do the girl, it'll be Fate Book 2 Laura. When I do the dragon, Fate Book 2 Dragon. When I go into my files later to try and find them, I'm looking for Fate Book 2. They're all together then. And I'm not searching everywhere like, where did this guy go or where did she go? Everything's kept together. That's why I'm touch telling you uh, what I'm naming my files, even though it seems like it's information you didn't need to know. It's just for file organization later. Okay, back to business. So Scott 6, 
make sure that you have ground renders off. This was already done in my scene. But this makes sure that when you delete everybody out here, that he's not leaving shadows on the ground. Um, and then I went in, I did do canvases on both of these. And I did show you how to do canvases in my last video, but I myself have learned stuff since then. So we go into, it's in your um, render settings, advanced placement tab, canvases. Um, you hit the plus sign, beauty canvas. We're going to hit our alpha here because we want it to have a transparent background. But we can ignore these nodes. We do not need to use these. And this will render exactly what we see here on our screen. So everything we see there will be rendered. Now, for this particular guy, I did do two renders because I needed to use nodes. Which I just told you you didn't have to have, right? But I needed to have my hooded cloak be separate from everything else. Um, I could cut out each little piece in Photoshop. And I probably could do it faster than the 20 minutes it took to render. It's tedious. I had other things that needed to be done. So I took the 20 minutes and I rendered just the cloak by itself and brought that into Photoshop. Okay, so after you hood a cloak, accept, render, this file I saved as Fatebook 2 Slade Hooded Cloak. This way all my Slade files are together. My Fatebook files are together. You get the picture. Okay, we're ready to Photoshop. So I will meet you there. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. We have both our canvases, the full canvas, which is the full slate, and one that's just our cloak. So the first thing we need to do is get these files ready to uh, where we can use them. This is a bit of a repeat from last time again, but it still needs to be done. So exposure. Edit, oops, image, mode. I'm using 8 bits. It was recommended that I try and stay in 16, but I'm going to be pulling some photographs in and uh, they are on the 8 bit channel, so it's just easier to keep them all the same. Merge, exposure and gamma, okay. I'm going to do this one also. Exposure. This one, um, we're going to leave a little lighter because there are things we're going to be doing to it later that are going to darken it up anyways. Eight bits. Merge. Exposure and gamma. Okay. Get our little move tool here. We're going to drag our cape and bring a mirror. One thing nice is um, Photoshop recognizes and it kind of like, when you get close to where it's supposed to be, it'll just kind of click in. So there's our cape. Um, one thing probably forgot to mention in the last video, I don't remember. Um, one of the issues I had with this um, before I did the cape or the cloak is I had this, um, this is a strap that's holding a bag and it was giving me poke through and going over the top of my cloak and I needed it gone. Um, when I did my canvases and I just clicked on um, the cloak, I was getting uh, transparency where this strap went over. So I did delete the strap out of the scene and off the character when I rendered the cloak. Also, um, when I did the character by himself, I also <clears throat> added gloves because after talking to the author, he's apparently furry on his full body and I thought it looked weird. Like, what's that furry blob? I think I thought it would be too hard to uh, show that that was a hand. So I put gloves on. Plus he's also very private and um, 
in hiding. He doesn't want people to know he's a banther, so he would wear gloves probably in, in the storyline anyway, so it made more sense. Okay, so the first thing I did was to edit the cloak where I wanted it. I, I didn't like the color, the texture, the poke through, um, so this is why we did a second one anyways. And like I said, I uh, could probably outline it in Photoshop. We are going to do this in a little bit with this belt. And since I do that quickly, I could probably do that faster, but I had dinner to make, so it was easier just to make dinner while it rendered for 20 minutes. Um, multiply. Um, sorry. I've actually recorded this video several times before, um, but I keep making verbal mistakes and stopping, and then when I finally got one that I wanted, even though I had pre-tested to make sure the entire Photoshop screen was showing, the last one did not have the entire Photoshop screen showing. So this is about the tenth time I'm doing this. Hopefully I'm not skipping anything. Okay, so I did Control J, which created another cop uh, copy of just the cloak. I put that in Multiply to darken it up. It went a little dark, um, so now we're going to lower the opacity a little bit um, so it gets to the lighting level that I want. I think that looks good. We have some nice reflection here, but it's still dark. Maybe could lose a little fill. Yeah. And I'm going to merge these two layers together now that it's where I want it. And um, we need to do a little correction on some poke through here. For that, we're going to get this Band-Aid here. This is a healing, the healing brush tool. If you hold down the Alt key, you get this little bullseye symbol, and you just click somewhere with similar coloring of the area you're going to go over, and you draw over it, and it will blend that together, and um, that will be gone. So we are done with our cloak layer here. As you see, when we rendered how it um, rendered just the areas of the cloak that shows, and nothing else. Um, nice, so we can do all our adjustments on just that cloak. So we're going to get rid of him. And we're going to get ready to bring our badger in here. Um, this is a pin tool. I'm sorry if I forgot to mention it. As I said, I've recorded so many times, I kind of am getting to the point where I'm forgetting. If you miss your little thing, you can hit Control Z if you get where you don't want it, and it'll take the last point off. I'm forgetting where I've um, started and stopped and what I've shown or haven't shown, and hopefully I'll get it right this time, and we won't need to record again. Um, to close your section, you're going to want to go over this little circle, and you can see the pin tool will now have a little circle next to it, and that will close your selection. Now we want to right click, we are going to say make selection, close your path I guess, we're now making a selection. We're going to click OK here. Um, I always leave my feather at one, and I, these are all basically defaulted I think. Um, this will create our little marching ants, and we're going to go Control C and Control V. Now I want to correct my grass here on the end of his nose. Again, I'm going to use our healing brush tool, and it can be a little smaller. I can use my Alt key and um, make a selection and go over this grass. And I'm going to be careful not to get too close to the edge, and we'll go over why you don't want to do that here in a minute.
Okay, that last one you kind of saw why you don't want to get too close to the edge. I'll show you a better example here of this in a second. Okay, so what happens if we get, when you're using the healing brush tool, it kind of takes what you've used and, the, it, and then what's underneath it and blends it together and around it and kind of blends everything together so you don't get a harsh, a harsh line like you would if we used the clone tool. And one of the things that'll happen if you get too close to the edge, then it's see how it will pull these in and, and then you have that um, big hole there. So we'll back up a step. And so what I do is I will just go in and I'll paint that now. His, it's going to be such a small element that it doesn't really need to be perfect through here. Um, it'll be a very small element in our picture. Okay, and I feel like I got a little too much green going on here. I'm just going to touch that with my eraser tool. I have that on um, low opacity and low flow and a, and a big, large, soft brush. And I'm just going to grab some of this a little closer so we don't get that green out of there. And the green will go away. We have steps we're doing later that um, with the color anyways, but that's just a little too much okay I think he's looking pretty good and we are ready to drag him into our um, canvases here and he's where we want him he's between uh, layer one which is our base layer and our cape layer he is obviously way too big we're gonna go control T which is uh, do our transformation box, right click. The first thing I want to do is flip him horizontal. And now I'm going to rescale him. When rescaling, it is very important that you hold down the shift key as you are dragging from a corner. Um, what this does, I will, I'm now not pushing the shift key. And as you can see this, if I don't push the shift key, I'm stretching him all over the place. I'm going to control C and put him back. But if I hold the shift key, this keeps him proportionate and in scale to what he's supposed to be. It locks it in. I can't, I can't go narrower or shorter. Um, it just keeps all the edges um, proportionate. I'm going to get rid of my, I'm going to put him here and then I'm going to get rid of my cloak image here. And I'm going to just kind of look, um, at how his head compares with the rest of his body as I finish this up like um, does he look see right now I think his head just still looks way too large doesn't it for um, the body size they have such long noses I generally see them from the front, I did not realize their snout was so long and narrow. We're going to take some artistic liberties with that later, but so I'm thinking that looks fairly decent in size. Um, now, Slade's got a magical cloak and it keeps his face in almost complete darkness. Excuse me. <coughs> um, so it'll keep his face in almost complete darkness so people cannot tell he's a banther. Um, so I don't want a whole lot of his face showing. I just want a hint of maybe the end of his snout showing. Um, we're going to do um, non-destructive editing. So we're going to use layer masks. And what this is, is um, this mask, whatever we paint on this mask with white would stay or be exposed. This is why it is completely white now. Whatever we paint in black works like an eraser and we'll take it off. But it's not completely gone. It's still actually there. If we need to bring that back in, we can. Um, we're also going to do the same thing on this layer. And we're going to remove part of this collar. But as you can see, his the human chin underneath here well he doesn't have that part where it pokes up so we're going to remove part of that collar i might have gotten a little carried away although it'll probably get changed again later smaller brush would be helpful there we go 
actually I know that we're going to change a little more of that later because we need to adjust our banter face here. Um, one way to adjust it was we, we could use our control T and um, use our warp and grab parts and bring and bring down. Um, that actually doesn't look look too bad. in and do our edits here. If I get quiet, is I'm concentrating on um, what I'm doing, and I'm not used to speaking while I while I do these. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a little tickled today. Um, let's see where his. Okay, that's where his black comes in from his jaw. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Let's adjust some color and see how he looks so we can get a better idea. Um, he's a little bright, he's a little yellow, and he needs some shading. So that's what we'll do next. And we're going to work just on this layer where the, the badger face is. Um, we're going to bring a layer adjustment layer in. And the first thing I want to mess with is hue and saturation. And we need to click this little part here, and that will create a clipping mask. And this way, anything we do will only affect the badger and not the rest of the image. And so I need him to be a little less saturated. Take some of those yellow tones out. You can see the difference there. And you can see that it's affecting just the badger, not the entire image. And then we're going to want to make him a little dingier, I think. I, he's a little blown in this area here. I want to... to uh, make that a little grayer. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is add some shadow here. I'm going to create a clipping mask. So again, that my shadow is only going to affect this area. And the first type of shadow I'm going to do this um, gradient. If you can't find the gradient tool, um, if you're using the CS versions, I know that the gradient tool is under the bucket tool. And I think when you first defaults in, it might a default to the bucket. So it's, you just hold this little um, end down here, this little corner, and select your tool that way. You want to make sure that this first selection is selected and that um, this one is selected to to this one here so that it will gradually fade into um, the black and then I'll go to transparency. I'm sorry, it starts out black and then fades into nothing. So it goes into transparency. And I'm going to take a long slope from here to here and that's going to gradually add some shadow over his snout area affecting again just him and here this window you can see that had this not been clipped to the the badger head it, this entire thing obviously would be gradiated from black to white um, and now I want to refine the shadow a little bit so I'm going to add another clipping mask I'm going to use my brush tool. I'm going to keep it set to 100 because I can uh, lighten it using the opacity and the fill. And I want a, to keep my soft brush, which is already set on. Um, and one thing about shadows is where they touch or are closer, um, they are going to, or where they where they touch. So like where his muzzle is going to touch this um, hood, where it's closest, the shadow will be closer. But out here his hood will come further away from his face and and so the shadow is going to be further away also so when we're doing the shadow we want to start close in here and then we want to pull away to wider and we're still setting that brown color normally I would use black not always um, and actually in this it works I'm gonna come this way just a little bit because that hood kind of overlaps um, I want to make sure. I think I've still got a little bit of that jaw showing right there. So we'll fix that in a minute. Um, and obviously, if I were going to leave it in normal mode, I wouldn't want this like pale grayish brown. But I'm going to put this in multiply anyways, so it it'll turn black. And I do see possibly a little light there. Um, I'll fix that in a little bit because we're going to do a little bit more editing. I think on his face filter. I'm going to um, blur this just a little bit to 
soften this shadow. And then I'm going to maybe fade it back just a little bit. It doesn't need to be quite so dark. Okay, I think that's looking very well. Okay, now, I, like I said, I think I'm seeing some jaw down here. And I am. But I pretty much like what I have going on with the shape of his face and position right now. Um, and I just want this tiny piece right here pulled down because I like, I wouldn't mind if there was a little bit of a curve right here. So we're going to use another um, method of moving things. We are going to use um, Puppet Warp. Puppet Warp is amazing. We're going to use it again. I'll tell you, show it to you in a little bit more detail in this cloak in just a few minutes. Uh, right now, I'm going to tell you, you want to make sure you have pins anchored so p things don't move that you do not want to move. I know I'm going to need one here. And I'm going to want one here. And I think the part that we need to move is in this area. I want to move that down just a little bit. It might be nice if we moved his whole neck down a little bit. Okay. So that stretched that down and now he is not where that chin is, is at. Now let me make sure I don't have pieces of his front part of his cloak covering where they shouldn't be. Okay, I don't think we do. Oh, I forgot to change my belt, so we'll change that before we're done too. Okay, I want to show you this puppet morph in a little more detail. It's extremely handy. Um, for editing things, especially like cloaks. Um, one of the things in my in my first image I did of Slade, in my test image that I did, is I brought his hood down a little closer around his face. Um, and I, I think I actually brought his muzzle, his whole muzzle down a little bit. I like the, the human was um, looking down more, more like this. But then when I did that, I, this ended up too far away. Um, and I, w as I said, his, his uh, cloak is magical and he's very hidden. And I, and I just felt if this curved in more, not only would it fit his face, but it would keep that sort of hidden, mysterious um, effect that we were going for. When I moved him, we have some more sticking out here. So we'll show you a little bit more in this puppet Ah, excuse me, Puppet Warp. Um, and I'll show you why, real quick. You want to put pins in areas that you do not want to move. So I want to bring this part right here a little more forward. And I'm going to put my pin here and here. Because these are the two parts I want to move forward. But if I just grab these pins and move them, and I have it anchored the rest down, everything else lifts up. So we want to put... Um, we can do control Z and bring that back. We want to put pins in and you have to be careful when putting pins in that you do not um, move it as you're putting them in because that happens. And you can do control Z to remove a single pin but you can't go back further than that. You can't use history because it doesn't record each pin. So I know I want to move parts at the top of this too. Possibly some of this area in here. Um, so the first pin I want to move is I want to bring this more down and forward. So it kind of has that draped over his eye effect. And also we want to bring it closer to his, his actual face because I've now changed him to be looking down. 
And we're going to bring some of this down also. Let's put one like in here. There. I think that looks pretty well. Now what you're seeing here is this here. To get rid of that, again, non-destructive editing, a layer mask, and we will go in and we will erase this part out. And I might go back and do another little bit of shadow on my badger face and just darken it up a little bit because now I have this um, hood coming down over his face here. And maybe just bring some more in like that. We'll use the same blur I did on the last one. And again, because I still haven't switched to black, we will multiply that. Anyways, you can see, so using Puppet Morph, you can really see how, like I could take this cape and really flare it out and stuff. It's a, it's a really, really handy tool. Okay. The last thing I want to do, because I forgot earlier, and this is what I could have done on our is my robe my robe is yeah it's just got that weird little gray area um this is what I could have done with my my cloak earlier is again we go to our pen tool I'm sorry we're gonna go back one and I want to make sure I'm on the right layer I'm working off this layer here my very first layer and I'm taking my pen tool and I'm gonna do an outline of this belt because I do I don't like how light it is. And we're gonna darken it up. This one does give you anchor points all the way through. Each little dot that you put down will go in. So you can go back in your history and remove dots if you mess up. Uh, you can also control Z. Um, to remove them. I'm trying to stay on the outside edge of this belt um, because there are just control Z. It, it doesn't matter to me if there's any of this dark area because I'm making the belt darker anyways. I just want to be sure I don't have uh, any light areas still showing. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be super per the super perfect I'm having problems speaking today. Okay, again I closed it, um, hitting the same point that I started on, right click, uh, create select, make selection, hit OK, um, and this time we're going to go control C which copies and control V which pastes, and then I'm simply going to put this into multiply. And I'm going to make sure that sometimes when you uh, copy and paste, like I think this may be lifted a little bit, it doesn't quite set it in the, nah, don't do that while you've got your, while you're on your multiply modes. For some reason it didn't change when I went to my move. Okay. Um, sometimes when you control paste it, it shifts just a little bit. And, and um, so you can see once it looks better once I bring it down. I missed a little spot there, but it doesn't really matter. I think it still looks good. So there is his belt all darkened. I think he looks that looks much better. And I think we're basically done. Um, we have made our don't do that. We have made our um, human human guy into a panther. Um, hopefully you learned some new tips or tricks. If you found this video at all helpful, please like or subscribe. It just Let's me know people are actually viewing and, and uh, liking it. Encourages me to do the do more videos. As I said, this is the first part of doing that full composite um, at the end. So uh, please check back.